Welcome to What to Watch Live, your home for must-see shows, hidden gems, and nothing but unbridled enthusiasm for the world of entertainment. I am your host, fighting out of the blue corner, weighing in at 213 pounds and hailing from St. Louis, Missouri, your friendly neighborhood gaming <laughs> guy, Gordon. And once again, you're all probably wondering where our usual host, David, is. Don't worry about it. He's currently making his way back from Westeros, and I promise you, he'll be back to his regular hosting duties next week. Now, uh, I want to thank you so much for joining us today on this guided tour of the majesty that is the plethora of movies, TV shows, music, sports, games, and more that are lovingly curated for you on the X1 and Flex platforms. We always appreciate it when you take time out of your busy schedule to spend some time with us. Hopefully, you'll leave with a, a smile on your face, a song in your heart and uh, some great ideas for what to watch next. Now, no one person can lead you through this sea of entertainment possibili uh, possibilities by themselves. And as any gamer knows who played the original Legend of Zelda, uh, it's dangerous to go out there alone, take this. And in this instance, that this is my tag team partner, the Mario to my Luigi, the Sonic to my Tails, the Leon S. Kennedy to my Claire Redfield. I'm talking about our TV and LGBT LGBTQ plus expert. Woof. <laughs> I'm talking about Scott. Scott, welcome. Hello. Hi. Hello. I thought you were, I was a little worried there. I thought you were going to make a fairy joke at the top of this because of the Zelda thing. But here we are. You came would, through. You followed through with the, the Leon thing. So I'm here for all of it. You know, I'm wouldn't, here, you know I love you. You wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> um, I'm psyched because like Scott likes gaming and I like gaming. And Scott likes horror and I like horror. It's like, it's like we're the same people, except you're younger and smarter and better looking and dressed better and, and people like you more. So I like. I think I'm actually younger than you, but you know. Mm -hmm. Agree to we'll disagree, see. my friend. We'll see. There would we'll be see. an easy way. To, to Can we do a poll that. right now? Should we see who, what the audience thinks? Who's younger? <laughs> mm. The thing is, is, there's an easy way to get that answer, but uh, I'm not offering that up. No, not me here. Either. Not today. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, without any further ado, and that was quite a bit of ado, uh, let's take a look at the batting order for today's episode. Uh, first up, uh, our music expert, Quam, is going to pay us a visit to tell us how he feels about Jordan Peele's new horror thriller, Nope. Uh, then Scott and I are going to do a deep dive into Multiversus. That's a new fighting game that pulls characters from every possible corner of the WB IP universe. Uh, then Scott is going to tell us about a hidden gem of reality show that is definitely a cut above the rest. Let's see what I did there. That's, uh, <laughs> how's that for punsmanship? Uh, and batting cleanup, uh, we can't let you out the door without any, let, letting you know about what new shows are on the horizon and which series are wrapping things up so you can plan ahead. All right. Ready to rock and roll, Scott? Totally. Always. Never been more ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, first up, uh, it, it's not everyone who can make the jump from sketch comedy legend to king of all things creepy, but Jordan Peele has done just that. So we're going to check in with Quam to find out why Peele's trilogy of terror, talking about Get Out, Us, and Nope, have got him both impressed and obsessed. Thank you, Gordon. Nope is the newest film from the uber-talented Jordan Peele. It tells the story of a brother and a sister who take over the family horse ranch when strange things start to occur in typical Jordan Peele's fashion. So let's take a look at the trailer. What's a bad miracle? They got a word for that. So I saw Nope, and it's definitely an interesting movie. It's definitely his most interesting movie in Peel's catalog uh, for a multitude of reasons. One, I think it's one of the movies, it's a movie that you don't really know what you're getting into when you're in the movie. I think the trailer uh, does, it shows one thing, but then when you go see the movie, it's a kind of a different vibe that's a little unexpected, but I think it's definitely appreciated. And that's one thing I really do appreciate about the movie is that Jordan Peele is able to, again, you know, keep the audience on, on their toes and surprise us with something that we really never seen before or done like this. And I think it's really hard for any, you know, movie director or writer or just any person who's creative to continually surprise their audience with uh, with new content, with, with, a new, with a new take, with a new spin. 
And I think, again, Jordan Peele does that so well. Uh, in regards to themes and what the movie is trying to say and messaging, I've heard multiple theories. Personally, I've gotten the idea, or I, what I took away from the movie was the idea of spectacle and I guess our human nature now, especially in this digital age, to want to be in front of the camera or be seen, uh, especially with social media. Uh, but I've heard other theories where it ranges from animal rights advocacy to uh, some you know religious uh, uh, hidden text or you know subtext. Uh, I personally can't. I, I personally didn't get that, but if you get that, that's great. But I think that's another great thing about this movie that is it's so open up for interpretation, and it's definitely going to fit in perfectly with what, uh, with Peel's other films. You know, with Get Out and Us. You know, Nope definitely fits in within that. This is it's it's it's, it's paranormal, but still grounded in reality. Uh, personally, I still think Nope doesn't hit the heights of Get Out. I think Get Out is still uh, Pe Peel's you know superior uh, best movie. But I think Nope is still a great addition into his into his overall catalog, and so definitely go see Nope. Uh, have a good time. It's a really good time. It's actually really funny. I was I was actually surprised at how many times that it, the movie genuinely made me laugh. Um, it has a lot of great characters. Kiki Palmer steals every scene that she's in, and now I want to see more Kiki Palmer and more stuff. So Hollywood, get on that. <laughs> Put Kiki Palmer in everything because I can just I can just overload on Kiki right now. Uh, but definitely see Nope. It's definitely a good time. I give it a two thumbs up. And so, yeah, back to you, Gordon and Scott. Thanks, Quam. I don't know if you're allowed to do two thumbs up by yourself. I think you need to have a, yeah. a partner to help you with that. Um, yes. I, I, have, I haven't seen it yet, um, but I love it when a talent gets to that echelon where whatever they do, I will check it out. Uh, like Pixar for a while or Wes Anderson, like if they're doing something, I'm going to watch it. And I'm definitely going to check out Nope when I get a chance. Uh, yeah. what is, what's your take on, on the works of Jordan Peele? I haven't seen it either. Um, big fan, obviously, you know, I love the horror genre. Um, but our, one of our fellow editors, David has seen this and he kind of gave me the rundown and his thoughts as well. So hearing that kind of paired with bombs makes a lot of sense. Um, one of the things I think that piqued my interest the most is there's this, um, side storyline of uh, a nineties television show where they had like a, an, an ape or a monkey that was working alongside the cast and actually murdered the entire cast. And that kind of has like a, apparently a big part in the movie. Uh, and David said that that was probably perhaps the most interesting storyline for him. And he wanted kind of more about that. So I'm curious to see it if for no other reason than that particular bit of it, just because it sounds interesting and like unlike anything that we've seen before. So you know. like anything that has monkey homicide, I'm in. Like, <laughs> Sign come on. me up. What Sign me up. Yeah. My problem is, is my wife will not watch horror films. So if I want to see, I like, I have to, you know, like I'll wait till she goes to bed and then it's late already to start a movie. And then by one time it finishes, it's like one in the morning and I'm all spooked out. Uh, so, uh, but I, I'll definitely uh, take the time to check are out you, Nope. Are you like me where you feel the need to like watch horror movies? Not because of like any type of fear thing, but I really enjoy watching horror movies with people. It's kind of like my preferred way to watch a horror film. Is that kind of your shtick as well? Oh yeah, I'll, I pretend that I'm like some tough guy. That is not accurate. Like I, like at my age, I still every now and then will hear something outside and be like, I know that was the wind, but I'm not, positive it's not jason Voorhees, like it's <laughs> which is you you should reach an age where that sucks I know. love that <laughs> we should move we should move on <laughs> i mean uh, we've already done it. <laughs> all right well hey speaking of jason um i love me a crossover uh freddy versus jason aliens versus predator godzilla versus kong buddy versus duff <laughs> it, it was a, that was a cooking show. That was a buddy versus stuff was a cooking show. Uh, but now, uh, WB. <laughs> uh, but now WB is attempting the most ambitious crossover to date. Now, join us as we take a look at what they're doing with all of their properties as we take a deep dive. Now, sure, Batman can mop the floor with the Joker, Two Face, the Penguin. But what would happen if the Cape Crusader were to score off against, say, Arya Stark from Game of Thrones, or Bugs Bunny, or Shaggy from Scooby-Doo? These are questions that experts have been debating for centuries. 
And now you can find it for yourself with the new game, Multiverses. Let's take a look. I've been doing this since before you was born. Glad I brought the utility belt. Oh, hey man, we just got to stop making like this. Steven Universe here, ready to be a hero. Hey, Batman, what's got 20 years in a face begging for a hammer? That stupid hammer is so practical. You wanna dance? Watch your step. Knock it down. The girl is Arya Stark of Winterfell. Time to eat somebody. <laughs> like wow, Scoob's oinks. <laughs> Um, sorry, I had to do it. Uh, so what is multiverse? I didn't have to do it. I just did it. Um, you're asking yourself, what, what do I just watch? I'll tell you, it's a four-player fighting game uh, in the same vein as Nintendo Super Smash Brothers, except whereas Smash brings together characters from the gaming world, uh, multiverse dives deep into WB's collection of intellectual properties to bring you fighters from, uh, you know, the DC Universe, Game of Thrones, Rick and Morty, and so on. And it was recently recently released on early access beta for uh, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X, S, Xbox One, Microsoft Windows, all the things. Uh, Scott, I know you had a chance to play this ambitious battler. Uh, what are your thoughts? I have. Um, you know, I think it is very, very similar to Super Smash Brothers. And I think one of the things that really appeals to me is that it's slightly different in that it's a game that's not really designed for like a 1v1 situation or like a, a free for all. Uh, it's really designed for um, 2v2 and in the way that characters complement each other and can kind of like support. Um, so I'm a big fan so far of the character list that they've got. My current mains, uh, if you don't know what mains are, as people that, you know, your primary players that you would play with, um, are Harley Quinn, Arya Stark, and Steven Universe. Um, what I find really fascinating about that is that they're all very different play styles. One is an assassin play style, so very, like, knife-heavy. Um, one is a brawler, and then one is more of a support character, which is not something you normally see in a game like this. So, love to see that. Um, but... You know, when I started to look at the the character lists, of, you know, obviously there's leaks for these types of games. It's insane. There's like, they always kind of mine the data and find out, oh, who's going to be coming up or um, maybe catch us a, a screenshot from something that like some random developer posted. And then all of a sudden everyone's running with theories. Um, it's just insanity. There's so much that they can pull from in terms of like the WB catalog. Um, like just a couple examples here, Ace Ventura, Candyman, Carlton Banks, you could play as Augustus Gloop, Veruca Salt, Violet Beauregard. I mean, could you imagine just like turning into a blueberry or and just like blowing up and like rolling around and hitting people? You could turn into Michelle Tanner um, and just, you know, be like, how rude, well, no, Stephanie Tanner, how rude, what was it? Um, what was Michelle Tanner's? Uh, the little, was Michelle the youngest one? She said, you got it, dude. Oh, you got Stephanie, it, dude, yeah. She said, how rude, how rude. Yeah. So you can play as either, but you know, you hit somebody in the face and say, you got it, dude. <laughs> I did not expect my full house knowledge to come into play, but I, I'm, not, I'm not mad at it. That's but the there you say. go. Um, so, you know, diving into this list really got me thinking, like, if you could have, you know, your character that is already going to be coming to the game or like a character that's kind of out in the ether from the WB, like the depths of the WB catalog, what would you pick? Um, so I'd love to tell you about mine, if that's all right, and tell you why they would Let's be better it. than your characters. <laughs> um, of the confirmed characters or leaked characters, uh, I'm most excited about Gizmo from the Gremlins franchise. I mean, who doesn't want that? You know, you feed him after midnight and then all of a sudden he turns into a gremlin and he starts going wild. Fingers crossed for a lady gremlin, because honestly, that would just be next level. Like if that's like an alternative costume, I'm so here for all of that. How do you oh, feel and, about Gizmo? <laughs> didn't, wasn't there a point either in, during Grem in Gremlins 2, the new batch, where Gizmo turned into Rambo? Yes. Uh, like, uh, or have him cruise in on that pink Barbie Corvette. Oh, <laughs> the options are limitless. And, and if he could transform into a Gremlin, there were so many different, like, between, between one and two, like, there was all, like, they caused so much mischief. Uh, I think this is a very solid pick. There's just a wide variety of different things. There's even, like, a Batman Gremlin at yeah. some point, a gremlin with wings. So the, the I think this is a super solid pick. I think the, the options are limit, li, limitless for 
Thank uh, Gizmo's you. offense. So well done, well done. Michael. I love it. I mean, I feel like it's a really solid choice. And I just, you know, as a, a I'm a gamer that loves an outfit choice. I just feel like with Gizmo, you know, there's going to be so many options. So I'm just, I'm sign me up for it. I'm on board. Um, and then in terms of people that haven't been announced, but like I would love to see um, Atreyu and Artex, of course, his his stallion um, from the never ending story for a lot of reasons one he's an incredible archer so obviously you'll have amazing ranged attacks um he has rn so he can basically wish for anything if he wants to wish you off the the battlefield you're gone sorry bye um and then of course <laughs> <Just> one <button. laughs> sorry bye <laughs> um and then you have our text which is you know you can travel long distances really quickly um but then don't forget his luck dragon falcor like He's gonna like get knocked off and then all of a sudden he just swoops back in to being like, yeah, yeah. And then we're good. Like you can't beat Atreyu. He's just, yeah. But when he gets defeated, should the horse like sink deep in the world? <laughs> don't, and I'm then, gonna, don't, oh, you're gonna make me cry. Uh, honestly. You? Yeah, you ruined so it for me. Let's talk about right now. Bambi's mother. <laughs> what happened to Bambi's mother? Is she okay? Um... There's a reason I don't watch Bambi. <laughs> <laughs> No, I love I love what you're doing with these pictures. I love because it's not just enough. To, I, I'm interested in this character. And I want to see them, but it's like, what do they do once they're in the game? What do they bring to the table that nobody else does? I think these are two really solid picks. Even Thank though it, it breaks my heart to compliment you on something you've done. Oh, uh, here well, we are. I've done it. So it happened. Can't take it, <laughs> can't take it back now. We're on television, so yeah. here we go. Yeah. So what do you got going? What do you think? So I'm a big fan of the WB fighting games, uh, mm -hmm. meaning I'm a Mortal Kombat guy. Uh, I'm an Injustice guy. Injustice is the DC universe. So I didn't want to pull from them, even though we know that Sub-Zero and Scorpion uh, will be making their way into the games uh, for Mortal Kombat. But there is a DC character that has never seen the light of day in Injustice. And I'm gonna apologize in advance for what's about to happen. Uh, <laughs> it hit my graphics uh, because, <laughs> do you really wanna, really wanna taste it? <laughs> oh, just imagine the peacemaker making his way into the arena, doing the full dance, doing the thing, <laughs> jumping on his shoulders, eagerly flying in. Oh, tell me that would not be the highlight of this game is watching big old John Cena doing his dance moves. Um, I, I gotta say, I love this show. I was really worried it was gonna get eaten up when all these things started getting canceled, but apparently, uh, Peacemaker 2 uh, season two is on its way. James Gunn has just a way of making you care about jerks. That's his superpower. <laughs> um, so I just love the idea of Peacemaker just because he has such a variety of helmets. All his helmets do something different. So that to me seemed like a really cool mechanic if he could switch on helmets to, you know, to, to levitate, to make uh, you know, sonic booms, things along those lines. And as somebody who likes a costume, Scott, you could appreciate that Peacemaker in jorts is, is yeah, basically I mean, John Cena. It's he, true. I mean, I feel like they they can't not have a brief moment as well. I feel like John Cena kind of made the superheroes and tidy whities a thing. So it's right. a whole it's a whole moment. So there's that's a variety outfit. of different ways, ways <laughs> to go with that. I don't know. Like I don't like he could be Johnny Fast and Furious. He's in that movie, right? Uh, so they, there's a, a ways they could go uh, with uh, the John Cena character. Uh, and then my other one, and this uh, this is a deep dive, much much like yours with Never Ending Story. Uh, the Mask. If you're not familiar with this, uh, Stanley Ipkiss uh, was a, a lonely bank teller, uh, kind of sad guy who uh, found a mask that gave him the powers of the God of Mischief Loki, and it turned him into a human cartoon character. You know, his eyes would bulge out of his head. He could he could pull objects out of anywhere. Uh, kind of similar to Never Ending Story, pulling things out of nowhere. Uh, maybe even like a Green Lantern-esque character who has the ability to do all these different things. It just seemed like something uh, that was, was different and funny and had a lot of different varieties for a fighting game mechanic. So oh, wow. now, Scott, it's your turn to compliment me. Tell me. I think these are fantastic choices. I'm still a little on the fence about Peacemaker, but I uh, love the idea of the mask. I mean, if his taunt is like Cuban Pete, like just <laughs> that's all I need in my life right now. I love that movie so much. And I just, I totally see how that could translate into an amazing character in this game. Just it's, it's, it is an animated character essentially. Right. But just with yeah. another layer to it. Um, I, yeah. It's fantastic. Come on now. I pull out the like typewriter, start doing people's taxes. And <laughs> hey. Finally a, ga a game where you can do taxes. Yeah. So long. Exactly. Uh, 
<laughs> we agreed on something. This is this is this is a good step for us. Um, if you if you want to learn more, the about therapy is working, Gordon. I know. This is what we're doing here. I know. I hope you're all watching to to learn what you should be watching. Uh, but also, uh, we need to work through some things, through some things, and I I, th I feel like we're doing that. So you know, um, this should be a, a couch to lie back on. Um, if you want to learn more about multiverses, we have uh, well, gaming entity pages. If you say Fortnite or Minecraft or Roblox in your Xfinity voice remote, it takes you to destinations that have all kinds of videos about those games. We also have that for multiverses. Say multiverses in your Xfinity voice remote. You get to see all kinds of trailers and videos about the game. And if you're interested in any of our picks, Never Ending Story, Gremlins, Gremlins 2, The New Batch, uh, Peacemaker, The Mask, uh, again, use this the beautiful state-of-the-art Xfinity uh, voice remote to, to do just that. Uh, all right, anything else about multiverses before we go on our merry way? I think we're good. We nailed it. Killed it. We, we did the ultimate it. deep dive, and now we are re resurfacing. We have given deep. We have given <laughs> dive. Dove. We're returning to the surface. There we are. We got there. I'm a professional writer. Yeah. Um, all reality TV is definitely not created equal. And Scott and I are going to bring you the cream of the crop, the best of the best, the brownies that are directly in the center of the pan. Uh, when oh we uncover no! The brownies on the food. edge. <laughs> we were doing so good. <laughs> I feel like we were on the same page. <laughs> You're an edge guy? Yeah. <laughs> it was not go there. <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe that's why we get along, because you can have the ones on the edge, and I'll have the ones in the middle. Yeah, perfect. Here, Look at that. Perfect synergy. Meeting uh, in the anyway, middle. <laughs> please don't leave us. Um, please <laughs> stick around as Scott and I uncover some hidden gems. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scott. I know you are super psyched for a show that's making its return soon. What do you got for us? Oh, I am so, 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 so excited. So I had some screeners come into my email the other day, and I immediately dove into them because I love this show so much. It's called Making the Cut. Um, if you're not familiar, you can learn a little bit more about it by watching my hangout that I did with Heidi Klum, Tim Gunn, and Jeremy Scott from last season. Um, but if you want to kind of get, I can dumb it down for you. It's essentially um, pro Project Runway, but like leveled up. Um, so it's basically, it's, it's owned by Amazon. Um, and what they do is these designers create looks. They create two looks, one that's more high fashion, and then one that is considered an accessible look for every challenge. And then the winner, that accessible look is then made available online that day, and you can purchase it, which is fantastic. Um, so super, super excited about it. We'll learn a little bit more um, about it after we watch this trailer. Hello, designers. Welcome to Making the Cut Season 3. <laughs> We have 10 very talented designers from around the world. Who is going to be the next great global fashion brand? I leave everything in Brazil to be here. This competition decides my future. The winner of Making the Cut will receive one million dollars! In each fashion show, the winner is accessible look with additional color options and companion pieces will be available on Amazon in the Making the Cut store. This is the most fashion we've had. And welcome to our incredible judges. This I like. It's like a hot mud wrestling competition. <laughs> I am uh, so mad at you. Why? Flames. Flames. Oh, Flames. you're gonna you're gonna clue you're gonna clue me right now. Why are you so mad? I, I've just been Mrs. Whited. Um, because <laughs> during dress rehearsal, you're like, oh, we're talking about making the cut. I'm like, oh, that's like Project Runway, White, right? And you're like. No, and you like you like made me feel like a real jerk because I didn't know making the cut. But if you just said it's like Project Runway. I you know and, and to to be fair, I did say to dumb it down. <laughs> oh, okay. So Gordon can get it. Is that the exactly? I'm going to Gordonify it. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, tell us about making the cut. <laughs> um, so this season is amazing. So Jeremy Scott is back. Um, Nicole Ritchie, who was actually a judge on the first season, but wasn't on the second season, returns, which I'm super happy about because her commentary is phenomenal, as you saw in that little clip. She's like, her comedic timing is everything, but she also has like really interesting points in terms of like her fashion. Um, but also one thing that's new this season is that the normally it's just one accessible piece that's available. Um, it's the same piece that was um, shown in the actual um, show. This time around, they're actually making uh, multiple color options of the accessible piece and companion pieces. So it's sort of like a capsule collection built around this kind of 
this winning piece. And as someone who's watched, uh, I think the first six episodes, I can tell you right now that you're definitely going to want to jump on your Amazon account and like get ready to buy some of this stuff because it's really cool and unlike anything that I've personally ever seen. So I, I really like this show and it really kind of got me thinking, you know, there's a lot of reality television show out there and it kind of reality television shows out there that kind of get like and the genre, I guess, gets like a bad rep because it's a lot of trash, um, you know, just people fighting and arguing. And like, I get that. And I understand people's wants and needs for that. But for me, and I think for you as well, as we kind of had this conversation, you want something that kind of highlights the cool and creative things that people are doing. And this show does a really great job of doing that. And there's a bunch of other shows that do a really good job of doing that. So I'm curious if you had to pick a show that kind of like really nails that sort of like creative element, what would you pick? Yeah, I, 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 lo I love this category because like, you know, you, you know, you have your lifestyle with, you know, people flipping tables and stuff like that. And you have competition <laughs> where they're, they're encouraged to lie to one another, deceive each other. But then there's, some, there's just shows, for pe they, they take creative people, give them materials and say, go at it. And I love that kind of stuff. Uh, I, you know, as, as everybody knows, I'm a huge everybody. You all, <laughs> everybody, all the, way, as, as all everybody the people, knows, <laughs> all, the, all the Gordon maniacs out there. No, uh, I love my holiday baking shows. Uh, you know, just you know, give people the ingredients and they come up with an amazing amuse bouche. Um, uh, or <laughs> you like did a not. Holiday cookie. I, did say <laughs> you... I didn't thumb it down. Um, yeah. So, it's like, I love that kind of stuff. There's, you know, on Netflix has blown away where it's people, you know, making these amazing like glass sculptures. Uh, but what I picked today is an old favorite, uh, well, not that old, but um, a classic, not even a classic. It's called Face Off. Let me just get the point. <laughs> Jeez, Gordon, find a point and stick with it. Uh, this is a show on sci-fi where uh, special effects artists every week are given a new challenge to make something horrifying and they're given a time limit. And what they come up with is just mind boggling as far, you know, the, the, apparently the theme is, is how much we, we love horror stuff um, this, this week. Uh, and they, it, it's just, it's really worth your time. To, to check out like these these masters at their craft and what they're capable of, if you're into it. I know not, not everybody's into horror, but as far as like taking creative people, giving them a time limit, giving materials and giving a topic, it can't be beat. It's just so cool. Uh, Scott, uh, do you have another pick uh, in this genre? Of, I uh, do, but reality? first I'd okay. love to talk a little bit more about Face Off because oh, yeah. I really think that it is a fantastic choice for this. And I honestly, this was one of the ones that I was kind of tossing around in my mind just because, what they do with prosthetics and like practical effects is truly, truly next level. And like things that you would never think of, like how creative they can get with it. Um, you know, before we even started this show, we were talking about removing eyebrows and how that kind of like changes. The <laughs> this is just the things that we talk about here at What's About. Do you, do you know why that conversation come up? I got my hair cut yesterday. And while I was getting the haircut, the, my, my hairdresser says, oh, do you want me to do your eyebrows? And I was like, I've never thought about my eyebrows my entire life. You should. And I'm like, <laughs> What's wrong with my eyebrows? Wait, should I have? Is this a thing yes. people talk about Gordon's eyebrows behind his back? Yeah, I um, mean, there's a Slack channel about it. <laughs> um, but I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, oh, no, I just ask everybody that. And I'm like, I'm the clay. You are the artiste. You feel free to mold, mold <laughs> me as you see fit. So she, she trimmed him up. And she's like, let me know if your wife notices. And she didn't. She absolutely didn't. So they could have been that bad because that woman has to stare at my face all day. So. That, that's, uh, this is a bit of a, a, a tangent. <laughs> a little I tangent. This is what the people want to know. Everybody who knows I like <laughs> shows wants to hear about my eyebrows. And here we totally, are. Totally, naturally, here we are. But yes, I do have a pick. Uh, my pick, and as uh, I think you're also a fan of this show, is Lego Masters. Mm -hmm. um, Will Arnett is the perfect host for the show. I mean, he just brings such an energy. Um, you know, I never really, I know he was in the film, but I never really synonymized him with Legos. Um, but he does such a great job of kind of owning that space and like his interactions with the people that are kind of making all of the creations is just really amazing. And like the challenges that they do throughout all of the seasons are incredible. I love that recently Fox gave a little bit of a sneak preview into the new season. And I'm not sure if you saw that they kind of like premiered one episode early that was uh, Jurassic Park themed, um, which was really, really cool. This is a bit of a, a long lead teaser, I guess, into the new season, which I'm very, very much looking forward to. But I, you know, some of my favorite challenges in this are the ones where they have to like make something and then immediately think about like how it would look when it's destroyed, um, <laughs> which is just like not a way that my brain personally thinks, you know, I'm not like putting on an outfit being like, 
how would this work if it like ripped off? <laughs> if I fell <laughs> like, down the stairs. Exactly. You know, sure but like, it, I don't know that my brain works that way, which, you know, I find personally really fascinating and it's really dramatic. Like, you know, you, I personally, I love tactile games, uh, anything that's like dexterity. I'm like Philadelphia's premier owner of German dexterity games, despite having the shakiest hands like on the East coast. Um, but it's kind of crazy. Um, so when I see people using Legos and like their ability to kind of like click those things together, I feel like I'm so ham fisted when I try to do that. Like it always just falls apart. Um, so it's fascinating to be able to see people do that with such grace. Um, and you know, when it does go south, it's, 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 it really goes south and it's, it's so dramatic. I love it. I feel like we're learning a lot today and we absolutely <laughs> do have a Slack chat where we talk about your shaking hands. Uh, you would. I, <laughs> uh, we, uh, and here's, here's a fun fact. Will Arnett would absolutely chastise you for saying Legos. Oh, it's not yeah. the plural it's of Lego. Legos, it's Lego. Because My Landon, our, you know, our, our, miss him so much, uh, did, a, did a Hangouts interview with him and absolutely got called out for saying Legos. So yeah. just FYI, if you're ever hanging out with Will Arnett, that, apparently that's one of his bugaboos. Her, uh, but I yeah, this is, a, this is a fantastic choice. There's just something about like, I, who, who hasn't played with Lego? Uh, their entire life. Rude. To see, to see like experts take it to such an art form is is uh, inspiring and depressing because you know I'm not capable of, of such things. But uh, awesome, awesome choice. Uh, yeah. But yeah, these, these those are our, our creative reality shows. And if you want to check them out again, uh, all these things are on the What to Watch destination. Just say What to Watch, the Xfinity Voice Remote, or you can cut to the chase and say Making the Cut, Face Off, or Lego Masters. I will take you right there. <laughs> um, are we missing anything? What else? What else we got, Scott? Are we, no, are we good to go? I think that's it. I think we're moving this train right along, this right. Lego train right along. This, this shaky, <laughs> shaky hand, wild eyebrow train is on the tracks. Um, Holding it together. We, I know. As we as we prepare to pull into the station uh, to <laughs> bid you a fond farewell, <laughs> toot toot. Uh, we wouldn't be doing our duty as entertainment experts if we didn't get you ready for the upcoming week. Uh, so please join us as we help you plan ahead. I like that entertainment train. Woo -woo. Uh, <laughs> come on, come on, do the. All right, um, boy, I can't take that back. We love anymore. some I... Kylie. Come on, yeah, that's true. We're gonna have um, to send her some money now. Thank you for that. I know, right? Can we, <laughs> guys, can we? Uh, if it's if it's if it's off, if it's not in tune, which I'm sure it wasn't, and we didn't it do wasn't. more than 15 seconds. <laughs> This is this has been a train wreck. Uh, <laughs> this this little performance between the two of us. Um, all right, so a heartwarming tale about a soccer franchise, a returning scientific legend, and Kevin. Oh, I hate Kevin. Just a few of the shows premiering in the next couple of days. <laughs> Scott is going to tell you all about them. Scott, happy to. The second and final season of AMC's dark comedy series Kevin Can F Himself premieres Monday, August twenty second, with the first two episodes available on AMC Plus. The trippy series, which alternates between a traditional multi-camera sitcom and single-camera drama, ended its first season with the reveal of Allison's plan to kill her self-centered man-child husband, Kevin. Uh, this season, we see Allison having to deal with the aftermath of that revelation and the outside pressure that she's receiving uh, to find a better way out of her housewife life. Did you know that in 2020, Rob McElhenney and Ryan Reynolds teamed up to purchase a fifth tier football club in the hopes of turning the team into an underdog story the whole world could root for? No, well, neither did I. Uh, but on August 24th, you can learn all about it in the new FX docuseries that tracks the dreams and worries of Wrexham, a working class town in North Wales, UK, as the two Hollywood stars take ownership of the town's historic yet struggling football club. On August 25th, Hulu releases its controversial miniseries, Mike, an unauthorized and no holds barred look at the life of Mike Tyson. And boy, does this one look to be a wild ride. The eight episode limited series explores the tumultuous ups and downs of Tyson's boxing career and personal life from being a beloved global athlete to a pariah and then back again. Mike drops on Hulu on Thursday, August 25th. Bill Nye the Science Guy is apparently dying to save the world, multiple times over actually. Are you confused? Allow me to clarify. On August 25th, Peacock will premiere all episodes of the new six-part docuseries The End Is Nigh. 
Build as a Science Disaster Series, Nye, along with co-creators Seth MacFarlane and Brandon Braga, take on potential real-life global disasters and show how they can be mitigated, survived, and even prevented using science. Finally, Friday, August 26th, kicks off the final chapter of the epic post-apocalyptic drama C on Apple TV+. The Jason Momoa-helmed Apple original is set in a brutal and primitive future, hundreds of years after humankind has lost the ability to see, and notably features cast and crew who are blind or have low vision. The eight-episode final season of the hit series will air new episodes weekly every Friday. Fans can catch up on the first two seasons of C, streaming now on Apple TV+. That was premieres. You excited for any of those in particular, Gordon? Oh my goodness. Uh, welcome to Wrexham. Uh, Mike, uh, uh, Kevin can F himself. Uh, all, <laughs> all of, of them. The, like, <laughs> what, what, I, I can never remember the name of the actress from uh, Schitt's Creek who's in Kevin can F himself. Uh, Annie. Um... Boy, she has the worst luck with like show titles. Like we shouldn't be I able know. to say any of those things. I adore her. Um, so, uh, anything that she's in, I will definitely check out. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, light is nothing without dark and sound is nothing without, uh, what is it? Noise is nothing without silence, whatever. I don't know. Things that are opposite can't have premieres without finales. So Gordon, please tell us a little bit about this week's finales, if you don't mind. I'd love to. All right, let's take a look at finales for the week of August 22nd, 2022. Kicking things off on Monday, August 22nd, is the season finale of Running Wild with Bear Grylls. Uh, that's on Nat Geo at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, to finish off the seventh season, Bear will be tackling the Great Basin Desert, but he won't be doing it alone. He'll have the host of one of my favorite shows, Holy Moly, along with him. That's right, Rob Riggle is going to try his hand at seeing if he can survive. Uh, from there, Sunday is a huge night for finales. Well, we, first of all, we've got the finale of the documentary series My Life is a Rolling Stone on Epics. Uh, this four-part series focuses on each member of the legendary band, with the finale giving us a look at drummer Charlie Watts. This is must-see stuff if you're a music fan. Uh, still, uh, we're still on Sunday. It's the season two finale of Only Murders in the Building on Hulu. Great show, fantastic show. You know, I knew Steve Martin and Martin Short were hilarious, but who knew Selena Gomez could hold her own with such comedy giants? Oh, and if you're a fan, I've got some great news for you. This series has already been picked up for season three. Uh, from there, it's a series finale, series finale, can't believe it, of Animal Kingdom at 9 p.m. Eastern time on TNT. What a roller coaster this show has been for poor Cody. What's he gonna decide? I don't know. I personally can't wait to find out. And also kudos for lasting so long with a character named Smurf. Well done. Uh, and finally, we're still on Sunday. We've got the season five finale of The Chai on Showtime at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, this sometimes dramatic, sometimes touching look at life on the south side of Chicago uh, is really a hidden gem. Check it out if you get a chance. Uh, it's yet to be picked up for a season six, but I have my fingers crossed uh, that Showtime is going to come to their senses. All right, and that, my friends, are the finales for the week of August 22nd, 2022. Now, Scott, is it true you have some controversial opinions about only murders in the building? I, I'm not about to get killed by all of the Selena Gomez stands, so I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. I know better. You know, after, you know, Audrey's mishap with the Julia Stiles stands, I'm just going to zip it, throw away the key. Nothing. I have nothing to say. She's doing all great. The show is awesome. Love it. All friends here. <laughs> all right. Well, like, like uh, Porky Pig was fond of saying, that's all, folks. Uh, I want to thank you so much for joining us on What to Watch Live. As always, everything we talked about today can be found using the sweet, simple, beautiful voice command, What to Watch, in your Xfinity <laughs> voice remote. There you'll find every show and movie we talked about, tons of collections, celebrity interviews, and more. Uh, it's really the place to go when you don't know where to go. You're always sure to find something awesome there. Uh, all the hugs and high fives in the world uh, go to our crew who push all the buttons, organize all this chaos, and make us look like a million bucks. Well, Scott looks like a million bucks. I only look like maybe like 10 bucks, but still that's enough to get a value meal and a frosty. Uh, and, last, <laughs> and, last, and last and certainly totally least, a fist bump to our TV and LGBTQ plus expert, Scott. Uh, I always feel like I, I did say nothing. I certainly totally least um, just because we've had a bit of a back and forth. The um, banter. We, got more, we have more work. We have more work to do on us. It's okay. Um, but I happen. always feel like I learned something when you share your picks. Like you always have such like a lot of cool stuff. You introduced me to a lot of really cool shows. Uh, but that's what we do here. We laugh and we learn. And we live, apparently. So and we live. We yeah. are we are a cliche. Like, it's like the sign <laughs> in my kitchen, we live, laugh, and love. Uh, but uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and we'll see you next week with a whole new batch of What to Watch Live.